Hi guys, I'm the British WW Man and today I've got another video for you. So yeah, I've recently been to an antique shop and well, actually two antique shops and I got a whole load of new stuff. I paid quite a lot of money but I got quite a lot of stuff so I think that is really a worthy kind of payoff if you get what I mean. So start off with so I went to this antique shop and this had been sitting there for ages and it was originally I think 20 quid but it's it was reduced to 11 quid I think ignore that uh, anyway so all it is is it, it's a what looks like a Victorian telescope case or telescope box it's got cardboard lining I think I think this is also cardboard. Either that was leather. So cardboard, leather, and what could be cardboard with a leather lining around it. Anyway, I've not managed to find any markings or stamps on it at all. However, there's a hole in the bottom there, and that's really it for that. So some of you might know, might have known that ages ago I got two Ukrainian shells. So I also managed to find there two of these Ukrainian shells. I think they're Ukrainian shells. They might be other shells, but they look like Ukrainian shells to me. They're British, I believe. Um. Got 1940 stamps. Six quid for these. It's a bit expensive, but then I realised that nice dates on the bottom. And well, why not? I got money for my job, so decided to get them. So. Compare them to the Ukrainian shells that I have. So I think they're Ukrainian. They look very similar. Not a lot, apart from this one here, which is a messed up one. So, another thing I got was this. Now, this is a pre war, I believe. Harmonica. Sorry about the shine, I'll try and adjust it. So yeah, and uh, the way how you know it's either pre-war or just post-war is because it says Germany there. But I think it would probably be pre-war because it's just the quality of it and post-war I really seriously doubt they would have been able to produce anything of this quality um, just due to the rationing and stuff and reason why it's got to be pre-war is because it says Germany there not East or West Germany which it would say if it was post-war it's a harmonica it's made for export uh, so it would be for from Germany rather to England Australia America New Zealand possibly South Africa anywhere like that that spoke English as a first language I'm not going to play it because I, at the moment, because I've no idea whether it's been someone with VDs been playing it or whatever, or some other disgusting disease that I don't want. Anyway, the inside's nice. Made out of cardboard, made, made to look like wood, which is interesting. Oh, it's a cardboard covered in. Cardboard covered in paper, sorry. Anyway, and the paper looks stylistically like wood. I think they probably did that because it would have been quite difficult to make a, a, wood, a strong wooden box like that. Could mean it's post-war economy, but I doubt it. Anyway, so that's that. I really like this Nightingale. Um, put it in the right way around. 
box. It's a shame that they've put they've had to put uh, sellotape on it. Because it's one thing that really annoys me with antique dealers is they put bloody tape on it, and then you remove the tape, and the tape takes off bits of the original paint. Why would you do that? There's no point. You just write, wind one of these things around it rather than tape it to it. Or if you're going to tape it to it, tape it to an unimportant bit like this. Not over the label. Anyway. Another thing I got was... Uh, um, oh, by the way, that was £2.50. Another thing I got was this. This is says Selwyn Pewter on the bottom. Reasonably old, I'll probably say 20s, 30s. Possibly more modern. Actually, I'll probably say more like the 50s. I have no idea. Anyway, whatever it is, however old it is, it's nice, looks old. It will do the job for this uh, filling hip flask. Even though I don't really need another hip flask, it's four pounds, a bit expensive. That was really the only thing that I wasn't 100% sure about. Another thing I got was this snuff box. This could be 1950s. Would be nice if it was earlier. But the, the really awesome thing about it is if you look at this. It's got a little hole there. So what you do is you fill it full of snuff. It's a snuff box. And what you do is you would go tip the snuff into your hand. So you tip the snuff into your hand. And then close it up again. Sniff the snuff. Possibly put some more in. And that's that. Obviously, I do not use snuff. I think it's a bit disgusting. And disgusting. And probably not that good for you. Anyway. This is like a dice. Bakelite dice thing. Oh, by the way, this was uh, two pounds. This is like a dice holder thing. So what you do is there's a bit of tape over it. You do that, you shake the dice, and then go like that. Then you could either play the guessing game, like what's the guess, guess how much dice, what number the dice is. If you guess the right number, you win something, I don't know, something like that. Or just shake, shake, shake. Gonna go two spaces, wherever, stuff like that. One of the last things I got was this. Now, I really like this. This is a civilian. I believe 1930s or possibly 1940s or 50s pocket torch. And so, yeah, there's that. It should hopefully still work. The outside is lovely. It's British, I think. The inside is quite rusted, though, which is a shame. I'll try and get a good shot with light. Quite rusty, you can see on the edges there, on the inside. But the and it needs it's going to need a bulb. But apart from the bulb, which you can, we can I. I think I have a spare bulb somewhere that we could use for it and the battery of course which I believe it just takes standard World War II German style batteries which they still make which is very good and just proves how superior the German stuff was to the British that they still make the batteries for them now the British ones they don't turns on and off by that by the use of the switch on the side it's very nice even if it is post-war so what it's same same style as wartime ones my mum's got one of these part of it's just like the bulb this section here straight 
straight kind of cylinder. Anyway, I think that's quite good. I've seen a, a picture of something like this in one of my German books. It's by Augustin Seitz, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, so these are all the stuff that I've got today from that antique shop. All of that stuff. So, next, while the lastly, I went to another antique shop and I got these. And I've been meaning to get these for ages, but I've been just been put off because of the price of them. Not from this antique shop, but just in general. Because the price for these is usually bloody expensive and a waste of money, in my opinion. So first off, this is an infantry assault badge. Bronze. This is for armoured infantry such as Panzer Grenadiers. So that would be Waffen SS, basically. That would be good for my Waffen SS impression. I could get away with having a, a one in silver which and say that I transferred over from the Wehrmacht here infantry to the Waffen SS and the other thing is this which is Luftwaffe jump qualification badge I believe so yep this is the only one I'm slightly worried about it's just the back part for this one it's a bit strange, but I mean, no one's really going to notice because it's going to be on my uniform. But anyway, they're both 10 quid each, which I think is quite good. This one's got some nice fake stamping on the back. This is prof sign here on that side, and it says, I think this is Ernst L. Müller. Müller, but the yes is the wrong way around, which is weird. That could be the person it's awarded to, or more likely the company name. I don't really know. These were both sold to me as repros. They look like repros. And it's kind of quite obvious with the head of the eagle here is pretty shit, if you excuse my French. But I could probably use a file try and get that down to looking less shit. But anyway, I really like these. And it, like Soldier of Fortune or Epic Notire, they'd be 11 quid plus postage. So I got them for about five pounds less than I would have. So not bad. So yeah, I mean, I love collecting German uh, badges like this. However, I really seriously doubt that it would be that I'm going to really do much of them because they just cost far too much in my opinion to really make